Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Great Minds Show, where great minds are confronted with the truth. Albert Einstein, who you all know and love, and Alfred E. Newman of what may worry fame, join Sufi George in an ideological debate that will scintillate, an exchange that will derange, and a program you won't forget. Our topic was submitted by George Arthalaro of Phoenix, Arizona. He asks, what is the meaning of life? Mr. Einstein, why don't you go first? Life, life, life itself is the meaning of life. Are you all bland? Can't you see anything for yourself? Why do I waste my time on game shows? Thank you, Mr. Einstein. And now we turn to Alfred E. Newman. Is my smile crooked? Some people say my smile is crooked. Be honest with me and tell me, is my smile crooked? Is it? <laughs> so we have two very different answers to the meaning of life. But wait, we haven't heard from Sufi George yet. Well, I ask you, if life isn't about shopping at Macy's, then what is the meaning of life? Um, that is the question you're supposed to answer, Sufi George. What is the meaning of life? Oh, this is the actual meaning of life we are talking about here. So, here is my certainly serious answer. Everything begins with awareness. Without it, there is nothing. The original state of the universe was nothing but awareness itself. If we exist, it is because we are a part of that, and we do exist and we do have awareness. In fact, we exist because we have awareness. That's how clearly we are a part of that, a part of the original universe. Not only are we a part of the original universe, we are a part that hasn't changed, a part that is the same as the original, because it is the original. The original doesn't change. We are the original, but we've partitioned ourselves off into an individual. Why would the universal awareness want to do that? What is its purpose? In a word, what is its meaning? Whatever, we see a lot of it going on. Awareness being partitioned off into all different individuals and all kinds of realities. We are one of those individuals, similar to each other but each unique, each flying off in a different direction. What's that about? What is awareness doing? Excuse me, Sufi George, I think you are a little off topic. Are you going to go on, and dom, and dom, like that? Let him talk. He is a little bit interesting, and I was getting bored, so let him talk. Sure, let him talk and I can take another nap. What does my smile look like when I am sleeping? Does it look crooked? <laughs> I figure that when awareness became aware of infinite possibilities as numbers, they found a way to pattern them so that they could be directly experienced. Here's how that actually happens. Frequency wave patterns come together through mathematical resonance, harmony, and develop wave fields that can be experienced. They can be experienced partly because their organization, developed through the natural selection of resonance or harmonious frequency waves, gives them a structure, and partly because their interwovenness gives them an intensity, a concentration of frequency waves. Since awareness has infinite possibilities for experience, of course it wants them all, and it wants them now. <laughs> so awareness is aware of all of the possibilities. But only when it pays attention through one of its partitions does it experience reality is happening. So to keep that going, it hangs out. Continuity? With awareness it's always now. So it must be continuity that awareness gets from continuing the quest, from continuing to experience new possibilities. That's who we are. We are one of the infinite possibilities. We are, for the time being, universal awareness aware of ourselves only within the confines of this particular possibility, only while these experience patterns flow through us. We alter this flow all the time with endless what-if statements. What would my life be like if I had turned right instead of left? Let's try that way and see. 
or, I wonder what that would be like. They're all out there, those variations of ourselves, living in the field of infinite possibilities. But if we are stuck in this variation and just let it happen, we are fools. We were just more possibility patterns randomly flowing through consciousness. Bad news, really. I mean, a stone can do that. <laughs> in such a dismal scenario, what is the meaning of life? It used to be that we could only manifest primitive frequency waves, just numbers really. Those were the early days. That grew into complex wave fields that we could experience. One thing led to another, and now some of these wave fields can walk around as individual human beings. Is that meaningful? I mean, it must have seriously grunted some dudes to accomplish that. <laughs> we have definitely stepped into it here, in something that's been going on for a long while. We have dumped ourselves right into the middle of it, with this particular variation on possibilities, this new, rent self. However, we are the general owner of our quest for continuing to expand in any interesting direction, any harmoniously resonant direction. That must be where we find the meaning of it. Each time we live out one of these quantum packets of lifetimes, the question is always, I wonder what will happen now. There is no answer, only the answers we make. Are you saying, Sufi George, that you don't have the answer to the meaning of life? That could cost you the debate. Hold your horses. I'm not finished here. <laughs> the only thing we want to learn from this variation that is us is this. Where will this individual one go? We let it loose in a changed environment and see what happens. Collect some data. See how those resonant connections are made. All that good stuff. When we are finished with ourselves as these individuals. It's back to the land where time is always now, where the quantum of our current life goes back on the shelf. We could live the whole thing over again if we wanted, but seriously, there's a pile of new work waiting to be done. There's a lot of work to be done in each variation. What new experience patterns will form by us changing certain resonances, by retuning each variation? Each of us is an important data contributor. Each lifetime, we feel our separation from universal awareness. We wonder who we really are, and all of that. So we can see that that feeling would be pretty natural, under the circumstances. Each time, though, we were set up as a specific individual that interested us, for whatever reason. What we want, how about that for a reason? If we've temporarily reduced ourselves to a mere living number, let's at least get what we want out of it. You cannot always foresee resonant connections. You can make your best guess at what will develop from certain conditions, but you never know for sure what will actually happen, which resonant relationships will actually find it possible to form in those frequency wave fields. So that's what we do. We make a best guess and hop into a different life quantum packet. I'll be back later, honey, keep the coffee hot. Insignificant as we may seem as one of infinite number combinations, we are the best we've got today. The number combinations, the frequency wave patterns that have cohered over time to result in individuals like us, is just fantastic to comprehend. We are certainly hot now. <laughs> so to answer the question, the meaning of life as individuals is found in answering the question, what will happen in this individual's life? Whatever happens is the answer. We have been allotted this piece of lifetime and we can invest it with meaning of our own creation. This is a contribution to the universe in exchange for the grant of a piece of lifetime. We cannot just let everything happen at random, when we can choose the path that contain meaning for us. Thank you, Sufi George. I declare you the winner of the debate. And by the way, everyone, you can find Sufi George's books by searching for Sufi George books on Amazon.com. Hey, hey, you cannot make him the winner. He put everyone to sleep. For God's sake. Hey, hey, who? Woke me up. My smile. How does my smile look? Is it crooked? Some people say it's crooked, but I am not sure so tell me, is it crooked? <laughs>
Oh, shut up, you moron. Now be fair, about this. My answer, was the best answer. A lot less, bullshit. And so we conclude our debate, with Sufi George the clear winner. Join us next time on The Great Minds Show. Listen to me, you punk rock, arrogant, jackass. I should be the winner. I am Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, do you hear me? Albert.